All right, in this scene over here, we're gonna have a ton of fun talking about ketone bodies. We're going to learn about how ketone bodies are made and how they are used. Let's take a look inside this liver over here to see how ketone bodies are produced. If you look inside the liver, this is what you'll find. Just kidding, you won't find machine guns and donkeys. But what's going on over here is going to help us remember how ketone bodies are made. Let's talk about how this happens. Over here we see the fatty acid, and he is very sad that he's a fatty acid. I guess because people call him fat? He doesn't look fat to me, but people call him fatty, and he doesn't like it. So he decided to turn himself into a seagull. A seagull called A. This is the seagull called A, because an A is part of its body. So it's a seagull called A. A seagull called A for acetyl-CoA. So ketone bodies are made when fatty acids are converted to acetyl-CoA. Now amino acids could also be converted to acetyl-CoA, but we're going to use fatty acids over here as our example. Now the seagull called A was also not so happy. People made fun of him because he looked like an A. So he converted himself to a heavy machine gun. Heavy machine gun for HMG, HMG-CoA. Now the heavy machine gun wasn't very useful because he had no legs and no arms to walk. He didn't like being a heavy machine gun, so he converted himself into an ass. A donkey, a donkey ass, that sits, a sitting ass, a sitting ass that was actually pretty good at tasting. So a sitting ass that can taste for acetoacetate. Again, a sitting ass that can taste for acetoacetate. This is the first of three ketone bodies that we're going to talk about. He can actually interconvert himself into a half beta fish, half hydrant. But this hydrant over here has this beautiful ring around it. Look at that beautiful ring on the hydrant. So this is the beta fish hydrant with the beautiful ring. Beta hydrant with beautiful ring for beta hydroxybutyrate. Again, a sitting ass that can taste for acetoacetate can interconvert to beta hydroxybutyrate. Beta hydroxybutyrate is the second ketone body that we're going to talk about. And this all occurs in the liver. But the two ketone bodies which we mentioned, acetoacetate and beta hydroxybutyrate, can now go to the blood. So here we are in the blood over here. And we're going to talk about two paths from here. The first is that acetoacetate can actually be converted to acetone, which can then be expired by the lungs. That's why a person with ketoacidosis may have breath that smells like acetone with a fruity odor, because acetone is expired by the lungs. But then there's another path that these ketone bodies can take, and that's the one that we want to talk about. That's where they travel to extrahepatic tissues, such as skeletal muscle, as well as the brain, in order to provide energy for the body. This occurs especially during prolonged starvation and diabetic ketoacidosis. What happens is, oxaloacetate is depleted for nucleogenesis. So since we can't use glucose anymore, we produce ketone bodies, which are used by various tissues. Now a few more things that we would just want to mention, that urine tests for ketones can detect acetoacetate, but it cannot detect beta-hydroxybutyrate. Another thing that we want to mention is that red blood cells cannot utilize ketones, they strictly use glucose. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this scene on ketone bodies. Take care.